the Yezu VX6R. It's been roughly one year since I got this rig. The journey with it has been nothing but positive. Having had some actual experience with this radio, my objective for this video is to dive a bit deeper into how the VX6R best served me, in hopes that you can get a good idea of what to expect from it. In this video, I will highlight things I like and dislike about this radio, as well as mention a few accessories that I have used in conjunction with it. There are many reasons to love the VX6R, but for me, the most important thing about it is its durability. In my opinion, this is the most important feature of this radio. The VX6R is currently the only radio I have that I can confidently handle without any fear of damaging or breaking. Having that confidence has encouraged me to use it more. I've taken this radio with me everywhere. If I drop it, no problem. If I bump it, no problem. If I get caught in the rain with it, no problem. Having this peace of mind has opened the doors for me to operate anywhere I want and in any environment I want. That for me is priceless. Now there's a disclaimer here. The times I have bumped and dropped it have been of minimal impact. I'm sure this radio has a breaking point, so I wouldn't say it's indestructible. Before I move on to anything else, let me talk about the body of this radio. The dimensions of the VX6R are 2.3 by 3.5 inches, with a depth of a little over 1 inch and weighs around 9.5 ounces. This is somewhat heavy for a radio of this size, but is definitely warranted given its rugged metallic structure. I honestly do not feel it when I use it or wear it on my chest or belt. The weight that it adds to my packs is minimal and acceptable given the potential importance of the radio in my daily and recreational life. Having only operated handhelds of the likes of a Baofeng, one big difference has been the presence of a tuning knob. I didn't think much of this at first, but having a knob to adjust settings and tune into frequencies has been of exponential advantage for me personally. Not only does it help speed up operations, but it provides a satisfying tactile response that enhances the operating experience. Just above the tuning knob is the volume knob. It has a more noticeable clicking feel to it than the tuning knob. Both knobs work perfectly for their respective purposes. Embedded inside the body is the speaker. There's nothing special about it other than it works very well. It sounds loud and clear when at top volume. One of the more critical observations I made in my first review was about the battery. At first it was difficult to attach and detach, but after just a few weeks of breaking in the radio, this was no longer an issue. I don't have substantial data on the performance of this battery. What I can say is that the average battery life is pretty good. I use the radio about once a week for checking into my local net, and at that rate it'll keep a good amount of charge for several weeks. I have used it for monitoring several times, and the battery lasts a healthy amount of time. Just to give an idea, I monitor while I hike. One battery will last me about three full days of hiking, and of course, it won't last as long when transmitting constantly for hours, but one battery does hold a good charge when I operate for one or two hours continuously. In four separate occasions, I have found the battery to be completely depleted. It seems that it will deplete on its own over the course of two months or so if it reaches down to a certain voltage. In other words, if I don't charge the battery every month or so, it will deplete on its own. I'm not sure at what rate this self-discharge happens, but it does occur often, which is why I keep a spare with me at all times. I am not completely sure, but this seems to be a normal thing for batteries like this. Not only can I trust it in most environments, I can trust it will get my signal out clear and strong. I get excellent signal reports during both repeater and simplex operations. I've made several simplex contacts receiving great signal reports. Yeah, you got a real good signal. Uh, you have a more Almost every week, our local net control lets me know how well the signal sounds coming into the repeater. I have transmitted from all kinds of locations and have used different types of antennas, but even with the most basic setup, I have seen good results so far. I know this is an obvious thing to state for a common radio like this, but comparing it to much cheaper options out there, this is definitely more reliable. In the first video, I had covered an array of accessories that I had purchased for the VX6R. I have not used all of them extensively, but here are some that I have used on a regular basis. Let's start with the belt clip. The Yezu Clip 14 has worked well for me over the past year. 
It clips well on belts and straps, giving me the versatility of carrying it on myself or my pack. I have used it mainly on hikes and walks, keeping it attached to my backpack straps. When I'm not carrying it, I detach it from the clip and pack it away while keeping the clip attached to the strap on my everyday carry bag. The only thing I'm not a fan of is the way the radio detaches from the clip. Having to rotate it provides difficulty in some scenarios. Doing this while on my backpack strap isn't a problem at all, but it's somewhat uncomfortable to do it while hanging off my waist, especially when I have a longer whip antenna attached. Note, this is a Yezu product and does not come with a VX6R. Another Yezu accessory I want to talk about is the external microphone slash speaker. This is a great little microphone. The build quality is excellent and the size is just right. At first I was puzzled at the fact that it was small, but I quickly learned this was a good thing. I have relatively small hands, so operating isn't a problem. Also, the smaller size makes it lighter to carry and easier to pack away in my bag. Although not noticeably louder than the internal speaker, it works just as well. My favorite part about this microphone is that it has a 3.5mm output built in so you can hook up any earpiece you want to operate with. The last accessory I want to mention is the only one that is not a Yezu product. I use the stock antenna when I monitor most of the time and it works very well. But as I've mentioned in my previous video, I like using at least a quarter wave antenna for transmitting. When I bought this rig, I purchased a diamond whip antenna, and although that antenna works perfectly, it isn't an antenna I would want to keep on the radio all the time, which is why I eventually went with this. This is a super elastic signal stick, made by the folks over at signalstick.com. This is by far the best 2 meter 70 centimeter antenna I have ever used. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I did want to mention how well this antenna works along with the VX6R. Because of its flexibility, I can pack it away without detaching it at all. Having a quarter wave antenna constantly attached to my rig is priceless. I don't have statistics on this, but based on my experience, it has outperformed even the diamond whip antenna. I have gotten nothing but good signal reports from my local net control and from simplex operators when using this antenna. In conclusion, this radio is rock solid and reliable. Although not the most comprehensive one out there, it's solid when it comes to standard 2 meter and 70 centimeter operations. If you haven't seen my previous video on the VX6R, I encourage you to check it out. I go more in depth on some aspects of this radio that I didn't in this video. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I hope to continue to work on videos like this and subscribing helps me advance the channel and expand the content. Thanks for watching.